We're here in the kitchen on Hocktail Farm, and this week on Radical Gastronomy TV, we're going to transform these glorious golden beets into spicy honey pickled beets for winter storage. Enjoy. Look at those golden beets. Coriander flowers, bird's eye anise heads. These smell amazing. Nice grip of tarragon. That's a beauty. We're going to pickle them. What we want to do about an inch of the greens. We'll save these greens to either cook and eat or share them with the livestock. So quick trim. I've already washed these. They came out of the uh, ground a couple days ago and I field dressed them and gave them a washing. Once we've got them all trimmed they're going into a pot of salted boiling water to cook until just knife tender and then we'll peel them so I'm not too concerned about getting every little bit perfectly clean since it's all coming off in the end and it's going into boiling water for oh, about 15 minutes or so the little ones may go quicker we'll just kind of keep an eye on them as we go then we'll peel them, slice them, make our brine, and pull all the flowers that we want to use off and go from there. In they go. To prepare the tarragon. The stem tends to be rather, rather weak up at the top, but if you come down a little bit, you can strip the leaves like so, and then just kind of pinch them off. The stem is soft enough to be edible at the very tip. So we'll strip them all, give them a rough chop. We still want to be able to see the shape and texture of the leaf finished product. So we'll chop that and then on all these flower heads I'm basically just going to take the kitchen shears and trim off just the little flower heads and we'll mix those in with the beets. All right so there's all of our tarragon. Kind of gather it up, give it a slight roll. And then we're just basically making quarter inch slices, not being too terribly concerned. Just about like that. That should work. So on these, just kind of coming across like that. And those will be visible in our finished product on this coriander. These have not completely gone to seed, but they are flowering. These were volunteers in my pepper patch and they were kind of shading out the peppers. So I figured why not get them out of there. I've got plenty of other coriander out there in the garden coming up behind. So I'm just gonna go through and take the flower portion. It has a beautiful flavor that is somewhere between the 
fresh leaf, what we call cilantro, and the dry seed that we call coriander. Same plant. So, I'll trim these up, and I have so much of this that I'll probably just feed the rest to the chickens. And there we have it. If you're going to catch sunshine in a jar, then this may be the way to do it. Beats are over here, all on the way. Looking good. Jars are sterilizing in the dishwasher. All right, small and medium are out. Three more big ones in here that should be ready. Then, while this water is still here and boiling, I pulled these cayenne peppers off of that ristra over there. So we're just going to pop them in there, mostly just to sterilize them before we put them in the jars. We'll put one of these in each jar. We're going to use a good bit of honey in this recipe and the spice of these chilies with the saltiness and the sweetness and the flowers and herbs should make a really nice flavor. Right, we're going to get our brine simmering while we peel the beets and slice them. Here I have two and a half cups of apple cider vinegar and two cups of water filtered water. I'm not going to pour all of this in because I'm going to use it to measure my honey. So we'll go down to just about two cups there. A little more. And then we'll take our honey and pour it in there honey was already starting to crystallize so I heated it up on the stove in a pan of water we're gonna do a cup and a half of honey so now rather than having sticky honey in a measuring cup just go in like that and we're gonna use two tablespoons of Himalayan glacial salt because I'm bougie like that. Oh my god. And that should make a perfect brine for these pickled beets. So this goes on the stove, bring it to a boil, keep it at a simmer, and then it will be ready the moment that our beets are. We have the canner heating up. All of our jars with one chili in them. I'm assuming I'm going to have about a gallon of material to fill these jars. We'll see if uh, I'm a little short. I may make it up with onions. I don't know. Okay, on to the peeling. We're going to cut the tops off. I have my compost bucket in the sink. So we can return this surplus. And then you can pretty much rub the skin off or scrape it with the back of the knife. Should all come fairly easily at this point. And I will do the tedious work of getting all of these peeled and then we'll slice them. All right, we're all peeled. I don't think we're gonna be anywhere close to a gallon, which is probably just fine because I don't think I made enough brine to do a gallon. I'm going to cut all these in half and then slice them at about an eighth of an inch, like so. Now, I didn't weigh the amount of beets I started with, just basically cooking what came out of the garden. And as long as my ratios are proper with the brine, the finished volume doesn't really matter. 
And if we need to whip up a little more brine, we can always do that. Best to plan to do a little more than you think you're going to need. And then that way you can just discard the remainder or use it for another purpose. And you won't be scrambling around trying to make something happen when you could be in the canner. This is that one monster beef. So we'll get all these sliced up, mixed with our flowers and herbs, into the jars, into the brine. And I'll take this moment to go ahead and, uh, and get my uh, seals on my lid softened. I'll do that just by boiling some water, pouring that over the lids in a bowl, and we should be ready to go. Sure enough, half a gallon of beets. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add a couple onions. That'll be nice in there, and that'll give us a little more yield. And I think this will be just about right for the, uh, the brine that we have. I basically made a little over a quart, about a quart and a half of brine, which I'm thinking should work out all right. So onions, julienne, like so. And our flowers and herbs, onions, beets, one on the floor. All right, I'll get this stirred up. And then we're ready to put it in the jars. This is going to be a disaster. So I'm just looking to get a nice homogenous blend the beets, the onions, tarragon, bird's eye fennel flour, and the coriander flour. About like so. Cover up all of our friends here. All right, check it out. Have a funnel to fill jars. And we're just gonna stuff these in right up to this first line here, the fill line. That way we'll leave enough headspace. We want to put them in firmly without crushing them. But just so we get a nice good pack. If you don't put enough in, then you end up with a lot of brine in the jar with a few floating beets on top, and that's not very impressive. So I'm trying to hit the magic middle. We want to fill these just to that same line. We want to make sure we have enough head space. Head space is the distance between the top of your food and where the lid goes. Head space is important because it allows air to escape and then as the jar cools, a vacuum seal to form. Also want to be conscious of bubbles and things like that. So I'll give these a little tap and kind of poke at them with a bamboo skewer. We don't want any air bubbles in there because it just creates a different environment where bacteria can post up and can cause spoilage. So We'll just do our best to ensure we don't have bubbles. And somehow, looks like I guessed just about right all the way around. So now that they're filled, wet paper towel, wipe the rims. 
there's anything sticky or gobs of food or whatever there, it can prevent the jars from sealing. Drain all the water, boiling water I poured onto my lid and rings. Take my lids, plop them on like so, on go the rings, I just put them on loosely threaded at first, once I've got them all on, I'll come back and tighten them to finger tight where they just give a little resistance. If you over tighten, you can have bursting jars as the pressure builds up. So just kind of, everything's hot, so just whatever you're comfortable doing, about like so, and then I'll drop this whole thing in the canner. Okay, they're in the canner. They're covered with a half an inch of water, and when this returns to a boil, we'll start the timer. We're gonna process these for 20 minutes. They're pint jars and I'm at a mile above sea level. So at sea level, you could process for 10, up to 3,000 feet above sea level. You could process for 15 minutes, and way up here in the high country, we'll go for 20. The timer's gone off. Have our handy dandy jar tongs. Dump a little water off as we go. Look at that. I use a towel so that I don't put hot glass in contact with a hard surface. That could cause them to shatter, which would be a tragedy. And then. We'll allow those to cool. Mm -hmm. 